Today my crew and I are working on a really interesting project. We call it a paneled ceiling. Now, unlike a coffered ceiling, we're not trying to divide this room up into nine equal pieces. A coffered ceiling works really well when you've got a room that's either square or perhaps just two or three feet longer than it is wide. This room is five or six feet more one direction than it is the other, so a coffered ceiling just really wouldn't work out well for us. And it's a pretty big room too. So what we're doing instead is dividing up the room this direction with some what I call major beams, which are about nine inches wide, and they drop down from the ceiling about three inches. Now, another advantage of this, what we call beam ceiling or panel ceiling, is that you can do it in almost any room, but also you can do it even with an eight foot ceiling. Now, the room we're working in today has a nine foot ceiling, but still, even if this is an eight foot ceiling, we'd still get a tremendous, tremendous look out of it. So this direction, we're running these major beams. Then the other direction, we've got what we call some minor beams. And then we fill in between that with some panel sections, it's just sections that we pocket screwed together using a Craig jig. And then we staple plywood on the back and fit some panel mold in between. Then the whole thing ties together with a couple more panel mold pieces. Now we're going to be showing you how all these parts and pieces go together as we go along. When the finished product's done, it really looks complicated, but when you kind of peel it back like an onion and you see how the layers go together, it's really an approachable project. Now, yesterday we spent a good bit of time kind of getting blocking done and getting our layout put together right. Now, I've got to tell you, it's really important to get the layout right because we want each of these panels to be the same size. That helps us not only with the look, but it also makes it a lot easier when we make repetitive cuts. But I want to point out real quick the blocking. Here, we're going across the ceiling joist, so we're able just to nail up into the ceiling joist. And then we've just blocked down the two layers, and we have to have quarter inch plywood involved because we're allowing for the quarter inch plywood that's gonna fit on top of our panels we'll make later. But the joists run this direction, which is the same direction that our beams run. So what we did was cut these plywood cleats that actually nail up into the joists and our minor beams are gonna straddle that. So this two by material is nailed and screwed up into these cleats and we just notched out around the cleats with our two by material. Then we blocked down and finally ran this major beam through here. The whole thing just ties together with a whole bunch of moldings, but again, getting the layout right is important. The next thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and put the major beam, the bottom for the major beam there. Now, we didn't originally plan to do this paneled ceiling detail in this room, so we're actually just covering up some can lights. We're gonna abandon them. Just the can light uh, boxes are not that expensive and we're probably gonna end up having to make an adjustment on our heat and air ducts too. Now, the good news is there's plenty of room to do that work from up above. It's gonna cost a little bit extra money, a little bit of extra trouble, but in the end, the great looks of this panel molding are gonna make that way, way worthwhile. I'm gonna get down, go get the guys to help me, and we're gonna take some measurements and start putting up that major beam. A lot of the interest of the ceiling comes from the different levels and the different layers that kind of stack and build upon one another. But the first thing we need to do is get this major beam bottom piece put on. Then we're gonna put the panel sections in here. And then the last part of it is the minor beams sit on top of those panel sections. Now, unfortunately, it's a little bit longer than 16 feet back and forth across here. So we're gonna to have to put a small splice on this end. But for now, we're gonna put this big piece in. Now we've cut a hole where our center ceiling fixture is gonna be. Ready, John? It's really important that we keep these lined up on the sides exactly. I'm gonna tack it real quick. Then just check with a square. Now that we've got this major beam piece up, we're ready to start putting panel sections in place. Frame and panel construction is a trim detail that we use all the time in the houses that we build. In this project, we're creating these frames and panels to put
put up on the ceiling. Now, it's really a simple technique. Basically, you put together a frame with your pieces. We use pocket screws to put them together. Then you staple a piece of plywood on the back of the frame. Then you fit moldings inside the frame to create these details. Now, there's all different types of moldings that you can fit in here to get lots of different looks. This is a pretty standard one that I really, really like. We use it for a lot of different things. Now, there are a couple things that can help you. These long pieces called the rails, you want to make sure you get them both cut exactly the same length. The cross members are called the styles. Again, it's really important to cut them exactly the same length because if they're cut exactly the same length, then all my pieces of molding that go up and down can be cut exactly the same length. So what I recommend is use a miter saw that's got a stop on it where you can really get accurate cuts. You really need to be able to cut within a 30 second of an inch. For instance, on this section right here, these style pieces, it was really important to cut them exactly the same length because if each one of those was the same, then each one of these pieces of molding would be exactly the same. I can set a stop and cut all those pieces repetitively. And if I'm careful how I locate this middle style, then these pieces are gonna be the same length too. Now, another thing, when you're cutting your moldings, you wanna make sure that you, if anything, get them just a tiny bit tight. And what I mean by that is just let it drag a little bit when it goes in, because I can do adjustments to a piece that's too tight, but if it's too loose, there's nothing I can do but just go get a caulking gun. For instance, in this joint, if this piece is a little bit tight and didn't want to quite go in, I could take my block plane and block plane off of the back of the piece of molding that was going up against it, and that would let that piece of molding come back in and go over. It's almost like shortening the piece. The other thing that I do is I'll take my block plane, I will under bevel the joints just a little bit so that I'm kind of wedging the pieces in place. Now, when I do that, I don't touch the face, I just under bevel. Now, don't make the mistake of trying to set your miter saw on an angle and cutting it a little bit of an angle because that actually changes the angle that you're cutting. You want to have your miter saw set square and then just under bevel using a block plane or you can even do it with a utility knife. So there's so many different things that you can do using frame and panel construction. Now, this is the panel section that we're putting in the ceiling, our panel ceiling, but you can also use this for a detail for a mantle. We do pilasters beside doors and, of course, wainscot. There's just so many things you can do by using this simple technique and just changing out the moldings. This is one of my favorite things that we use all the time on the houses that we build. We've spaced two inches off of our major beams on each end, put a pencil mark up there, and we've taken some measurements, and I know that if I butt right against this block, I'm gonna be where I need to be. John's gonna to need to space a little bit. We try to be careful and leave ourselves a little bit of room. Now, the other thing that we've done is we've marked where our ceiling joists are so we know where we can nail this up. So, John, you ready to put it up? Yep. I'm looking pretty good, how about you? We've got our first panel section in place. Now it was really important to us to get all the spacing around it right so that when we start adding our other layers of molding, we'll have the proper reveal all the way around. We also marked our joists so we knew where to nail into. And from this point on, each layer of molding is gonna lock everything in place. We've got lots of layers of molding, but it all has to start by getting these panels in the right spot. So we're gonna move over now and put the other panel in then we'll be ready to put this minor beam in. When we set the two middle panels, we were gonna be covering them with that five and a half inch wide minor beam. The panel we're getting ready to set next goes against the outside wall. Now around the perimeter, we have basically a beam that's about two thirds to three fourths the same size as this wide middle beam. So the trim details that we use when we hit this big beam will be the same trim details we're gonna use over here at the wall. What all that means is, I've been using a two inch spacer to space our panel sections off of this big beam. I need to use the same two inch spacer here at the wall to space off of that. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark this first, make a mark here, and then finally mark two inches back there.
I'm standing right below one of the minor beams. Now the minor beam is actually just a piece of one by six that has a panel mold detail added to it. And then some other piece of panel mold fit on either side of it. But before I can put this piece in, I'm gonna put a two inch strip that runs right along through here. And the minor beams actually go in between that strip. Because we've got a three quarter inch frame with a piece of quarter inch plywood above it, I need to fill in this space so I have something to nail to. I've just taken some two by four and ripped it to one inch thick. And what we'll do is just glue a series of these to fill that in all the way around the perimeter. And then we'll be ready to put that two inch strip that's gonna run through here. Gonna use a little bit of glue on top of them just in case we don't have much to nail to. I just put the first one of the minor beams for this run in place. Now, the next step, we'll go ahead and put the other minor beam right there in place. And then we take this molding, this profile, and we will just make a rectangle of it all the way around inside the minor beams. It's gonna fit right like this and that'll tie the whole thing together. I'm just filling in on the very end, basically the same as we went down the long beams. We put a two inch filler at the end and then we put this piece, which I believe is five and a half. It's about six inches off the wall because we're gonna add a molding here at the outside wall when we get done. So that gives us a little bit of play to adjust. But uh, in essence, we've still got the same relationship here on the end that we have down the middle. So I put a two inch piece, we filled this in, and now we'll complete the panel mold around this inside, and that's gonna get us to the point where we're ready for the last piece of trim on these beams, and that's a little piece of molding that fits here. This piece of panel molding is what trims out where these major beams tie into the panels, and so this piece is gonna turn and run all the way down the major beams. Now, I'm also gonna use the very, very same piece right like this at the wall. So it's gonna be here to trim out the wall and then it's right up here all the way around the major beams. This is the last piece that ties everything together. We're gonna to go ahead and take off and run our long pieces right now. Once we finish that, there's only one more little touch and that's adding some real delicate little molding on the bottom of the minor beams that gives a whole lot of interest to the ceiling. These little frames of panel mold are how we're adding some depth and interest to our minor beams. And we just cut them in pairs. We went out to the saw, set a stop, and cut lots of little pieces. And then we just headless pinned them together with a three quarter inch headless pinner. A whole lot of the work that we've been doing on this ceiling, we've done with headless pins. Because when you're working with small moldings, a headless pin won't split the trim. It's almost impossible to get to split. And also, it allows you to uh, really put some nails in tight spots because they have a very small end on those nailers. So I'm just gonna put this second piece up here and we'll finish up this whole run of the paneling. 